What's up everybody, top of the afternoon, Sunday Sessions, episode 12, here to provide you with a ton of content to help you scale your Amazon business. We're talking delegating tasks, hiring employees, increasing profit margins, managing inventory, resourcing and using VAs, all that good stuff's happening right here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button. And if you've been here for a while, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the support. So it works like it always works. It's a live Q&A. You put your questions here, I answer them. Bickety bam, just like that. I've been out of the office for a little while due to some health issues. First of all, all of the support from all of you has been amazing, tremendous. Literally hundreds of messages wishing me well. I appreciate all of that. You know, the relationships I've built with some of you across the world are truly phenomenal. Just the other day, I'm in Houston right now. Just on Saturday night, I went out with somebody that uh, I met through Instagram. You know, I've, I've gone out with them a couple times and like, that's amazing to be able to travel the world and have people that I know in all these different countries and all these different states and all these cities across the world. It's truly amazing and I'm truly grateful for that. What's up everybody? So if you're just joining, let me know where you're from. I wanna know where you're from. I am from New Jersey. Actually, forget where you're from. I wanna know where you are right now. Where are you right now? Cause I'm over in Houston, Texas. I'm gonna be here until probably the end of June, maybe early July, hanging out here with my beautiful girlfriend. Say hello, beautiful girlfriend. Hello. <laughs> That's Catherine, she's my ride or die. Get yourself a ride or die. London, we got London in the house. Romania, Chicago, Orlando, Boise, Idaho, LA. Tons of people all over the country and the world. Palm Springs, awesome, awesome. Oh, we got a Clifton, New Jersey. That's where our Amazon business started in Clifton, New Jersey. Switzerland, wow. Kalamazoo, what is that, Michigan? Or Missouri, Mississippi, what's MI? California, Austria, Brazil. This is crazy, I love it. So before we get into these questions, um, the end of August at ASD, we're gonna be throwing a massive meetup in Las Vegas. So if you're in the Las Vegas area or you plan on attending ASD, um, I will post some more information about it when it gets a little closer to the date. Also, at the end of this month, the end of June 2021, I'll be hosting an absolutely free meetup right here in Houston, Texas. So already got about 10, 15 confirmed people who are gonna attend. It's going to be a live networking event. Just gonna hang out for a couple hours, eat some good food, have some good drinks and network. It's amazing when you, especially if you don't know anybody in your city and there's a free networking event or even a paid networking event, you're able to attend that event and meet new people, right? Because then you're able to network with them and build relationships. And then you have a friend right in your backyard who you may be able to go in and, you know, both go in on a purchase order. Say there's a high MOQ, high minimum order quantity, and you can't quite reach the $50,000, but you meet two or three people from your city and you communicate, hey, you know, let's go half on this order, or let's go three Z's on this order. So there's just a ton of opportunity there. Um, and then you just, you know, you build your network. You know, I, I truly believe one of the reason why Sebastian and myself are so successful is because A, we're very personable, B, we operate our business based on spiritual principles like honesty and integrity. And C, we're all about expanding our network. So you should be as well. Thanks for the tip. Last time for wholesale, buying from different vendors and selling already. Amazing, Kazatoni. That's what's up, man. We met out in, uh, where was that? Anaheim, right, Kaz? Yeah, we met out in Anaheim. That was a good time. We'll be back out there soon as well. We have two, maybe three Florida trips in July and then August Vegas trip. So we're gonna be traveling the country, meeting up with all of you. Said, what advice would you give to a totally new Amazon seller when it comes to finding the right product? That seems to be the most tricky part for me. So I'm assuming you're talking wholesale, right? Or at least retail arbitrage, brand name products. So for brand name products, you're gonna to wanna to contact a fair share amount of wholesalers. In our course, we recommend contacting you know, 30 to 50 in the first week because you'll have about a 10% open rate. So you figure if you count, if you contact 50, you'll open accounts with about five of them. If you contact 30, you'll open accounts with about three of them. So it's a numbers game. Wholesale, I can't stress it enough. 
wholesale is a numbers game, my friends. So you gotta be putting in the work. You gotta be putting in the work. You gotta be sending the emails. You gotta be picking up the phone, making the phone calls, or else you're not gonna have access to those products that are gonna help you grow your business. Now, this is another tip. This is something that most people won't talk about. This is one of the foundation reasons of why we own and operate a top 10 Amazon company in the United States. And that reason is, looking at the products you're purchasing and taking averages, right? So just a couple minutes ago, a member of our course sent me a message and he said, hey, Eric, I found a really good product that I could add to my order, but I'm making 175 on it. And my expenses to get the product out the door is 175. So essentially I'll be breaking even. And then he asked, should I pick up that product? And I told him, absolutely, you should pick up that product because it's the law of averages, right? The more items you're selling, you wanna analyze your distributors based on average profit margins across the board because you're gonna have some products that sell really well and profit you a lot of money. You're gonna have those in-between products that are just like consistent, don't sell as fast, get you a little bit of bread back in the pocket. And then you're gonna have those products you may be breaking even on or even losing money. If you just focus on those products that you're losing money on, you'll never be able to scale your business because you're so focused on the negative that you're missing out on the positive. And the positive is where my mind always tries to go to because if I'm not looking at the positive, then I'm stuck in the negative and it's so tough to move forward when you're stuck in the negative. So what I would encourage all of you to do is look at your vendors as a whole. Don't just seclude one or two products and be like, this product was trash. Look at your vendors as a whole and then figure out what your average profit per sale is, right? And anything, I know for us, our average profit per sale is right around 375. It's perfectly healthy. I'm okay with that. And then how you can increase those profits is by cutting off production cost, meaning the time that it takes you to produce that product to get it to Amazon. Do you ever ship stuff outside of the country? So we're actually in the process of sending our first couple pallets over to Europe. Super excited about it. It's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, we kind of put it on the back burner as a real priority right before COVID struck. And then COVID struck and FBA in the United States was just so lucrative that we just went all in on FBA. We turned off our FBM in the US. We still have it turned off. We're not selling any FBM, maybe a product or two listed, just something that had a FBA restriction. But other than that, we are not focusing on FBM. We are 100% focused on FBA in the US. But like I said, in the next couple weeks or possibly month, we'll be sending out our first pallet to the UK. I'm super excited about it. Yeah, wholesale is hella profitable. Yeah, in 2020, we pulled in millions of dollars in profit, like multiple millions of dollars. So absolutely, wholesale is killer profitable, if you're doing it right. Well, this is why we created a course, right? We created a program to train people how to sell on Amazon properly. Right now, 3,000 people a day sign up to sell on Amazon. Only about 33% of them will ever sell a product. So that's still 1,000 new sellers sign up to sell on Amazon every single day. That's 365,000 new sellers a year. That is a lot of sellers. And here's the thing, a lot of them have no fucking idea what they're doing, right? So it takes someone like us, Sebastian and myself and Amazon Lit, to guide them. And what that does is it helps the entire marketplace as a whole. There's 50 something people in here right now. It helps each and every one of you when we train an Amazon seller to sell on Amazon the correct way, right? To understand their profit margins, to understand their shipping fees, understand their referral fees, understand their storage costs, understand their removal items and what's collecting extra storage fees, like all of that. It's important to understand that because if you're not understanding that, then you're essentially losing money and potentially you're driving the cost of listings down and you're affecting the entire Amazon marketplace as a whole. What software do you use to find products? We use Scan Unlimited and if you wanna send me a DM, I can share with you a link where you get 50% off. I think it's the first month, so give it a try. You know, 50% off, give it a try. If it works, it works. If you don't like it, you could try another one. But we recommend using Scan Unlimited to find our profitable products. You know, something I find, which I find crazy, I'm in a lot of private Facebook groups, and I, see, I hear people talking about Helium 10. They're using Helium 10 for wholesale. It just makes no logical sense to me. 
It really doesn't. There's no reason to be using Helium 10 for wholesale. Phenomenal for private label. The keywords, the, the what is it, the ASIN analyzer where you get to see all the products and how much revenue it's making, how many reviews it's have. Amazing, but there's no reason you should be using Helium 10 for wholesale. Absolutely not. So you don't recommend retail arbitrage at the beginning? No, absolutely. Especially if you don't have the capital. So we, our business started off of retail arbitrage. You know, we were going to retail stores, purchasing 10 of this, 15 of this, five of this. And then we started building relationships with the managers and purchasing pallets. And then we started purchasing full truckloads. So retail arbitrage is a great entryway into Amazon because there's low cost of entry. You don't need a lot of money. You could start with a hundred dollars. And also it will teach you a lot about selling on Amazon because you're gonna be shipping items, you're gonna be processing returns, you're gonna be packaging the goods, you're gonna be dealing with Amazon, you're gonna be opening some seller support cases. So it's really going to teach you a lot about the ins and outs of selling on Amazon, which will help you dive into wholesale a little quicker. Now, if you are considering, if anybody's in here considering getting into wholesale, um, there's a barrier of entry, right? And, and really it's finances. So what we recommend is having two to $4,000 for inventory for wholesale, which if you look at it, it's not a lot of money and you could even use it on credit cards. So if you have some business credit cards where you're getting two, two points back, three points back, you know, you could use those. Right now we have about 500,000 points, Sebastian and myself. Um, you know, that's enough for us to make book these next couple travel trips, pay for all of our airfare, you know, possibly a hotel or two. And all of that is just from spending money that we were going to spend anyway. Do you do any distribution? Yeah, we, we do, Mohammed. We do do some distribution. We own a wholesale group and it's only available right now to members of eSellers RI. I literally get dozens of emails a week from outside sellers um, and we just have to keep them out, right? Because our main focus is helping the people who are part of our mentoring services. So um, we offer a wholesale catalog, we send it out monthly, but it's only to members of eSellers RI and members instantly get 10% off the entire catalog. So it's a game changer. What do you do about new look products where you know it's the same and the UPCs match, the customers complain, that it's different and it ruins your account health. So we'll just communicate. This happens frequently. We use a site called upcitemdb.com. It's upcitemdb.com. And when you put the UPC in there, it will usually show you a package change. But if it's the same UPC, it's the same product. And just an explanation needs to be had with the customer through messages to explain that to them or an update of the listing, possibly updating the images if you're allowed to. Some of these listings are brand controlled, so you cannot edit the listings, but some of them are not. So you will be able to edit those listings. So possibly an image change might be an option for you as well. Hey Eric, thanks to you, I got to 30,000 pounds per month in the UK. Amazing, Jazzle That shit's impressive. First of all, I wanna know what? What was it that, was it something we said? Um, I'm, I apologize, I don't recognize, recognize Instagram names, but are you in our, are you in a seller's RI? Was it our YouTube channel? Was it just the Instagram post? Jazza, what helped you grow your business? That's important to me. So I can go heavier on that because if it's helping you, it can help other people. Uh, so yeah, Cupid's and Brews, the course is $29.97. It's literally, I personally think, not only because I created it, because I truly believe it is, it's the best Amazon course in the market. Um, it's actually on courseranks.com. It's the number one wholesale course, ranked wholesale course. We we'll also have phenomenal ratings on Trustpilot. Um, the members love it because we care about your success at the end of the day. You know, we really do. And if you're interested in joining, I believe I'd have to check our roster, but I think we maybe have two or three spots available. I think it might be two right now. Someone just purchased one last night, but we do have two spots available. So if you are interested in joining our powerhouse group of crushing it Amazon sellers, we literally have a meeting tonight at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern 
um, which would be 6 p.m. Pacific Standard. And we spend, you know, hour and a half to two hours just helping you grow your business every single Monday night for the next six months. It's a game changer. How different is it to sell in Europe comparing to US? Will your course help on that? It's not very different. The beautiful thing about Amazon, it's pretty universal, right? So right now, um, and yes, our course will help with that. We have about 20 to 25 members from all over the world. Australia, Brazil, Romania, United Kingdom, Italy, Canada, Mexico, Colombia, literally sellers from all over the world. Because what, you, what we teach is universal. It's more about like how to understand Amazon and grow and scale your business. And then the beautiful thing is, once you join, you get access to all these other international sellers. Like just a couple minutes ago, right before I started this live, uh, a seller asked me if he I knew of any repricers that work great in the United Kingdom. And off the top of my head, I didn't know any. But literally, I posted in our private eSellers RI Facebook group, and within 30 seconds, three people responded to me with two or three different repricers, and I shared the information with them. Because it's like I have access to those type of sellers, international sellers. So I had, this is a good question. How do you win the buy box? So consistency, right? Growing your seller feedback is an important aspect to selling on Amazon. Most people don't even consider that. So using a software like Feedback5 or um, what's another one? Uh, feedback Whiz. These are great seller feedback softwares that will send automated emails to your customers, which now customers can opt out of. But still, you should be getting around 1% seller feedback. So for every 100 orders, you should be getting one seller feedback. Um, right now, I think we're getting about 1,800 seller feedback a month, which makes sense because we're selling about 250,000 orders a month for buy box priority you want to keep growing your account so amazon continues to trust you you want to expand your SKU count so you have a variety of SKUs in different categories so your chance of winning the buy box are higher also you want to make sure you're listing your products prime fulfilled by amazon you want to make sure you have competitive pricing so you can have buy box rotation because if you're a dollar higher you're probably not going to get the buy box if there's two or three sellers that are buy box competitive so it's things like that that will allow you to continue to win the buy box and just not giving up a lot of people tap out too soon they spend two or three months oh i'm only getting a few sales i don't want to do this anymore it's like two three months for how does that make logical sense right a lot of people have no problem committing to college for four years some people get a master's commit to five or six some people get a doctrine commit to for 12 years right or they have no problem working a nine to five for the next 40 years praying that they'll collect a pension but all of a sudden you start a business and three months goes by and you want to give up what is that? That's that quitter mentality, you know? That shit doesn't fly. That's just not gonna fly. Like where, wh how does that make logical sense? It doesn't. Excited to hear you on the West Coast deals this week. Yeah, I'll be there. I think it's, uh, I just posted it. I don't know if anybody's part of that West Coast deals group, but, oh, this is a great picture. Look at this, this is a cool picture. Look at this, me and my, my homeboy, look at this. It's cool. Oh, you're looking at it? <laughs> this is my bestie right here. Hey, Sebastian. You know? So yeah, if you just if you're on Instagram, go like this photo, right? You just go to it and you click this little heart right here. And then you click on the comments and you leave a little comment. You leave little fire emojis. Let me see where are my fire emojis right there. You leave little fire emojis. Right? And then you click send and boom commenting on the posts right support the hustle my friends that's a great picture that's amazing that's classy little snazzy mcschnazerson yeah so i'm excited about the west coast uh deals west coast goods as well i believe it's wednesday um i'd have to check my story oh i'm live look i'm live i'm live on the live watching it live talking to y'all live look at and we even got we even got two lives. Look, I'm live <laughs> on the live, watching the live, doing the lives. Now that's that's some fuck your mind shit, you know? Too many lives. Don't get confused. It's an inception. It's an inception. It's just crazy. Thoughts on Helium 10? I think about it, and it's good. I like it for a private label specifically, not for wholesale. Doesn't? It's not very helpful for wholesale. How can you improve the sales with PPC? Um, so you definitely want to be looking at your reports. There's an export, 
When you go to your PPC campaigns, you can export a file and you can start digging into the keywords that are populating sales. Uh, you can look at their A cost, you can look at how much was spent, how much was returned in revenue, and you wanna make adjustments to those bids for those keywords, right? Because if you have a keyword that's spending 30, 50% of your budget, and it's populating no sales, you wanna make that a negative keyword because there's no reason to be advertising for that keyword because it's just tearing into your pockets. Um, also, what we do is something uh, called like a catch-all, um, and we add high profiting items as well as um, slow moving items into a low bid, high budget campaign. Um, so for example, we have a, we call it excess inventory, right? It's products that aren't moving. Um, just whether, you know, we're right in the cusp of the buy box or just the rank went up, which happened frequently after COVID. You see these, these keeper charts where it's very consistent and all of a sudden the rank just skyrockets. And when the rank skyrockets, usually the price decreases. So it'll look like this, right? This is, so you see the rank go like this and the price go like this. So this is a common thing where this will be the rank on a keeper chart and this will be the price. So the rank goes up and when the rank goes up, the price goes down because people are fighting for that buy box and the higher the rank gets, the less units it sells. So the lower the price needs to be. Now you can run coupons, you can run volume discounts where if a customer buys two, they get 5%. If they buy three, they get 8% off and they get all these stuff. So um, there's just a, there's a lot of opportunity with PPC. I hear a lot of people complain about PPC and I'm not a complainer. I'm a I'm, a, I'm like I said earlier, I'm a positive, positive, happy-go-lucky guy, you know? And uh, you look at what it is to get in some of these big box stores for a month in, in their, you know, center of their coupon uh, printout newspaper for the month, you're talking $30,000, you know, $50,000, you know? And then you think about putting a, a commercial on TV, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, especially if you're looking at some big fight or big football game, you're talking, you know, half million bucks, million bucks, million bucks plus to get your ad on there. When Amazon advertising, PPC, you spend fucking $3,000 a month, build a multi-million dollar business, right? And then you can bump it up from there. Obviously the $3,000 isn't always gonna work. The more money you're making, the more you're gonna have to spend to stand out from your competition. You know, what's his name? Derek, uh, Derek DeMeo, a good friend of mine. He spends millions of dollars on advertising a year. And he's also built a $100 million business, right? So it's really, you gotta understand. Um, and if you don't understand, you need to learn because if you're gonna be delegating that to somebody else, it's tough to delegate it or even understand what they're doing and if they're doing it correctly, if you don't know how to do it yourself. So you don't have to become a PPC professional, but you need to understand the basics. How do you guys manage your inventory? Is there any program you can recommend to keep track on inventory in a warehouse? So in your own warehouse? Um, I know a lot of sellers use Restock Pro or Restockly, I believe it is, Restockly. Yeah, Restockly, uh, Restock Pro. Those are software sellers use to manage their inventory. Um, as far as inventory management within your warehouse, we've tried them all. We've tried SKU, uh, SKU Vault, SKUBANA. Oh my God, the list goes on. I don't even remember all the ones we use. We use so many. But my personal opinion, no offense to these companies, I'm sure they're great at what they do for other types of businesses. But for Amazon businesses, all of the out of the box softwares for inventory management within your warehouse that we found are a basura. So we just don't use them. Um, we're actually building our own. Our goal is to offer as a service, but for years we used Excel. Um, and you can have a developer kind of tweak it a little bit so it makes it more user friendly, but you wanna have locations in your warehouse and when you put an item in that location, you wanna document what UPC it is and how many ASINs you have of that as well as an expiration date, right? And the reason why you wanna have expiration dates is because when you search your inventory, you wanna be looking for products that have, let's say, less than 120 days or close to 120 days because you know you need to get those out of your warehouse or else they're gonna just die there. 
and nothing's worse than having inventory die. I always rather send a product to Amazon. Let's say the product costs $10. I rather only get $5 back from it, $6 back from it, $7 back from it. So I'm losing 30% of the item cost than have it die in my warehouse. Because if it dies in my warehouse and it expires, the only thing left to do is, if it's not expired yet, is donate it, which in New Jersey, they give you 1.5X on your cost of goods, which is amazing. I don't know what it's like in other states. You'd have to contact your local CPA. But once it dies, once it expires, it's worthless. I always rather get 50%, 60% back on a product than 0% back. When you get products from manufacturers, do you ship it just like it is to Amazon, or do you repackage it and put labels on it? We repackage and relabel all of our products in-house. We've managed over the years to get our cost of production very, very low um, through streamlining our processes and, and creating essentially four production lines. The guy was a genius. You know, he created the production line. Now, millions of companies all over the world, including Amazon Lit, use those production lines to scale their business and scale back their production costs. So we prefer to package them all in-house because I want to see the product, I want to touch the product, I want to feel the product, I want to make sure the end consumer is getting the result they're expecting from that product and it's packaged properly. We've used prep centers in the past, we've used Amazon services, but as of to date, we package all of our own products. How much capital do you recommend to start off with wholesale? So uh, two to four thousand dollars for inventory and then I highly suggest if you're getting into wholesale, um, or you're already crushing it in wholesale to purchase these sellers RI, which is an additional $3,000. Um, there's also a four, four month payment plan. So whatever suits your finances best. But what that will do is like all these questions that are being asked now, you literally have access to us all the time through a private Facebook group, right? And you have access to us every Monday night for an hour and a half to ask these questions. Um, and then you get access to all the training. We're literally guiding you step by step. This year, we're gonna we're gonna hit about sixty million dollars a year on Amazon. Uh, we're one of the top ten Amazon sellers in the country. So I, I I know a thing or two about growing a very successful Amazon business. Do we need to legally create a company to sell on Amazon US? Uh, I live in another country. So yes, if you live in another country, you need to create an LLC. If you do not live in another country, you can sell on Amazon as a sole proprietor. But the issue with the sole proprietor is you do not protect your assets, right? The purpose of an LLC, it's a limited liability company. So it protects your personal assets, your car, your home, your investments. God forsaken, anybody was to sue you. That is the purpose of having an LLC or an LLP, Limited Liability Partnership. But if you are out of the country, yes, you need an LLC. If you're in the country, you can sell as a sole proprietor. I do not recommend it. it the cost of creating an LLC is so inexpensive. It's like 300 bucks with like a, in New Jersey, it's like a $25 a, a year maintenance fee. Can you give me the Cliff Notes version of your story? How long have you been selling? How did you start? Yeah, I can give you the cliff notes. But yeah, it's a little cliff notes, little synopsis of our story seven years ago, almost to the day. Where is it? Eight years ago. It was 2013. So yeah, eight years ago. Wow. Eight years ago, almost to the day, Sebastian started selling products in his basement, doing retail arbitrage, going to Costco, BJ, Sam's Club, all that good stuff. And then it just grew from there, you know. Uh, I was helping him sticker products here and there. Then we moved to our first warehouse, 1,000 square feet. And then we grew out of that, had three or four employees, second warehouse, 2,500 square feet, seven or eight square feet, seven or eight employees, knocked down a wall, had 10,000 square feet, 15 employees, knocked down another wall, um, about 15,000 square feet, 20 employees. And then we moved to um, our current location, which is 20,000 square feet. Now we have about, you know, 50 employees. We ship 250,000 orders a month. Uh, we're pushing about $5 million in sales. Um, we are 85% wholesale, 15% retail, I mean, uh, private label. This is what we do for a living. We also have um, an in-depth training and mentorship program to help sellers like you in this call um, to really crush it. And I'm super excited and ecstatic about the results we've seen with the sellers in the course because those who are willing to take action literally fucking crush it. Yo, Richie, what's up, bro? Hey, what is up, brother? Chilling, Chilling, man. Get the table. 
Do it all right. Let me get the stable here for Christ's sake. I'm in my basement. Yeah, yeah, I see that, man. I see that. What's what going on? What are, you, what are you doing? A little construction over there? No, no. This is well. <laughs> that's a, a moisture barrier, but I'm actually trying to get things cleared up here because, you know, I'm taking oh. off the floor, so I'm trying to. Okay. It's been okay. it's been crazy, man. Yeah. How hey, you Richie, I'm I'm well, man. I'm well. I'm getting back into it. You know. Happy to be talking to everybody. I want to congratulate you, and you've been crushing this YouTube game, man. Crushing it, bro. You're getting like a thousand subscribers that. a week, man. You're crushing it, dude. It's it's been it's been crazy. Yeah. Um, but not without. Let me unplug this thing so I can stable this. Oh, I had a battery pack here. Okay, there we go. Um, but not without like that. Like like you guys preach that extreme sacrifice. You know, yeah. people see the videos uploaded. And it's a snapshot in time, and it shows people exactly what's going on. But what they don't see is the time that I have to not be with my daughter and family mm -hmm. while I'm editing videos and being out. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's, it's, been a, it's been a long journey. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, and, you know, I find that a big part of being a business owner is communication, right, with your loved ones and being like, hey, baby, hey, you know, I don't know your daughter's name. What's your daughter's name? Valentina. Yeah. Hey, Valentina, like daddy needs to do this now, you know, but you know, after this, we're going to go to the park or so just like constant communication is, is crucial, as you know. Exactly. You know? Hey, listen, I, I, I heard you drop a bomb. They say you were going to do 60 million. Is that yeah, what you said? Sir. Yeah. 60 that's million. Amazing, a year, man. Man. That's amazing. That's brilliant. that's. I don't even know. Like, do I even say congratulations or do I say, <laughs> wow, you know what? I expect nothing less from you guys. Cause you guys absolutely crush it, man. Yeah, man, it's, it's, My been God. Long, it's that's been amazing. a long journey. Yeah, and, and you know what's even cooler? Like, I've been able to, I've had some health issues with my foot this past month. I've been able to take the entire month off, and literally my business is just, you know, so obviously Sebastian's over there and Ted, but, like, the employees, they just know what to do, and they're crushing yeah. it, you know? That's, that's what's the That's cool. awesome. That's awesome, and that's why when I, you know, we're moving down to Florida mid-July, I was good. I was thinking about getting a warehouse here in Massachusetts, but because of the move, I'm waiting to get down to Florida, and then I'm going to get a warehouse there. So hopefully, we can start getting up to that Amazon lit level one day. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> that, that inspiration, man, it, it really helps keep everybody going, man. I know I'm not the only one that feels that way. So yeah, well, well, listen, if you're moving, what'd you say, mid July? Yeah, mid July. Yeah, man. Well, I'll keep you updated because we're we're going to be doing some some Florida trips, uh, late July, early August, mid August. So. I'd love to Absolutely. meet up. Absolutely. That way you, you can swing by and uh, pick me up in the Rolls Royce, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll make it happen, Richie. I haven't seen you awesome. since, since New York, I believe. Since right? New York. Yeah, New York. Cool, brother, man. Well, listen, I appreciate awesome. you joining the live, man. God, yeah. God bless I appreciate you and your family. You. All right? Thank you. You too, Eric. All right, I'll talk to you. I'll see you, brother. All right. Bye-bye. Richie Hustles, the OG. Dude's been crushing it. I love that guy. You know, there's certain people you meet. And it's a lot of you. It's a lot of you in this live and a lot of the people that I've interacted with. Sometimes you just meet somebody and you get this feeling about them, right? It's like a, you just know, like, this is a good guy, you know, or this is a cool girl, right? You just get that, that, that feeling and you just know, you feel it in your stomach, right? That gut feeling, that intuition. Um, and Richie's one of those people. So mad love to Richie. Shout out to Richie. All right. Well, listen, everybody, this has been wild. I'm almost don't want to go. We got 80 people in here, but I got responsibilities to tend to, you know. Um, maybe I'll consider doing like a three, four hour live one day and just fucking hammering out the details. But everybody, this was Sunday Sessions episode 12. If you missed it, we left. It's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Monday. Oh, is it Monday? Yeah. Oh, it's Monday. So once again, this is Sunday Sessions episode 12. 12 super excited to have all of you here you can find us right here on our youtube channel dropping that heat make sure you smash that like button and subscribe see you on the flip side have a beautiful day stay grateful and stay lit Peace.